The doggies are putrid. And the two of us have got a smile from ear to ear with this week's round 23 review with the lace out team of Jamie the J-Dog Wallace and yours truly, Christopher the Peps Pepper. I've never actually said that in the entire time I've rolled this out. I've never said it that way. But hey, big fella, what a cracking week of football. YouTube went absolutely bananas last week. The podcast went absolutely bananas last week. So for everybody who listened and subscribed, if you haven't, subscribe now and make sure that you ring the bell. We thank every single one of you for joining us in this AFL journey. We're getting into the last week of AFL footy, J-Dog, for, for 10 teams. And uh, it's going to be a sad time until they hit the nightclubs in Ibiza and then all will be forgotten. But uh, it's great to have you on board again. We've got so much to talk about, so much to get into. But more importantly, how have you been? I've been very well. It's been a... Um... <clears throat> It's been a, it's been a, it's been a month. It's been a heck of a heck of a week of football. I feel exhausted. I feel that. I think we're ready for some finals, Peps. I think we're ready too, mate. I think we're ready for finals. I think we're ready to spin some magnets. We're ready to have a massive discussion um, because there's no head of football at the moment in the AFL. So what's on the show tonight? Well, I'm about to tell you. We're going to have a massive discussion. If we were in control of the AFL, what would we change? Right now, what would we change? Anything that we want to. We're going to get deep into that one later on. We've got the ladder. We've got the fan tail will be back. We've got journey to the draft. We're going to spin the magnets. We've got all the fan favorites and also plenty of people joining us live on the chat and plenty of people joining us for chats on the YouTube channel as well too. So it's going to be a chock-a-block episode full of um, upsets last week, full of upset people, full of upsets football-wise, and some decisions I've got no idea what happened whatsoever. But we're all going to get into that. Uh, before we do, what was your big takeout? What was your number one thing that struck you this weekend? Ooh, number one thing that struck me this weekend. Great question, Peps. Um, it's the uncertainty of the top four. You reckon? Yeah. Okay, in the fact that you don't know how it's going to finish off at the end of the year? I By this time, you sort of get a feel for what it is, but there are teams outside the four that are playing well, and there are teams inside the four that are looking shaky. Exactly right. I can't wait to have a chat about it, because it's going to be into this game, and we're going to get into that a little bit more in next week's mega pre-finals by weekend episode. So stay tuned for that. But hey... Big fella, let's get the big one out of the way. It is the ladder. We know we have to have a look at it because it has gone absolutely nutsoid this weekend with just lots of changes, lots of things happening. And the thing that blows my mind, and I, I can't figure this one out for you. I'm not even going to start at the top. I'm starting at the bottom. What in the hell were West Coast thinking? They had everything at their disposal. They had the they had the AFL world to ransom. They had that number one pick. They had a guy that didn't want to go to Perth. And they foobarred it to beat the Western Bulldogs away. Now, it's great to get a win, but what were you thinking? You could have got anything for him, and now you could be getting pick three rather than pick one. Yeah, the kind of... Look, we don't, Peps. We don't like to talk about teams tanking. We don't like to talk about teams manipulating the draft, but you could have split that into pick pick, pick whatever you wanted. You could have had three first-rounders, I reckon, two this year and a future. <laughs> you know what? They've tanked all year, and when it gets time to tank, there's no tank here. No tank, Robbo. No tank whatsoever. Maybe they lack the balls, Peps. Oh, they, they, have you seen some of the scores? They lacked balls throughout the entire season. But look, let's go from the top. Collingwood, another loss on the weekend to the second place team, the Brisbane Lions on 64. If they have a, if they lose to Essendon this week, which I don't think is going to happen, Brisbane could jump the first. Yeah. Port Adelaide on 64 as well. They are looking very, very shaky. Mm -hmm. They are leaning more than that Pisa Tower. Well, do you know? Do you know? In the 1980s, they secured that. Anyway, 
Yep. Anyway, well, you haven't secured third position. <laughs> Melbourne had their win against Hawthorne. A very brave Hawthorne, I would say. They were very, very good on the weekend. Uh, and that's your top four locked in. And in my humble opinion, J-Dog, it's going to stay that way. So that's going to be the first week of finals. Colin would play Melbourne. Port Pelee, Brisbane. Yeah. Oh, no movement. No movement. There'll okay. be no movement. Here, no movement. Robbo, no movement. Maybe right. Port should maybe Port should tank this week so we don't play Brisbane up in Brisbane. Who do you play this week, though? We play Richmond. You're not going to tank. Well, maybe we should because we'll I don't... Do you, do, you, do you want to play Any, Brisbane in Brisbane? Any any club, anytime, anywhere. Yeah, bullshit. Okay. Carlton again. Jeez, they just, they just scrape in. The second week in a row, they've scraped in. Oh, frustrates me. But good on them. Uh, 54 points. St Kilda, 52. Great win against the, uh, <laughs> the retirement home of the Geelong Football Club. The Sydney Swans, good win. GWS, great win. Everybody had a smile on their face when Eston lost by 100 and, what was it, 120 plus. Let's just go 120 plus, round it off. Western Bulldogs, hold your heads in shame, people. I can't even believe there's still a chance to make finals on 44 points. Eston the 44 as well, too. Geelong are out of it. Richmond are out of it. Adelaide, there's only one thing that I can say when it comes to Adelaide, J-Dog. Absolutely, the Crows were robbed. Right in front of me. Right in front of me. Right in front of everybody, they were they were robbed. Absolutely robbed. They were. Uh, <laughs> I know you're laughing, but that was just shit effort by that umpire. I'm sorry. Fremantle 36, Gold Coast. God, that could have been anything. But now we've got a new coach, which we'll get into shortly. Uh, Hawthorne, the best 16th placed team I think the AFL has had in a very, very long time. West Coast. I don't know what you're thinking. And North Melbourne on eight points as well, too. So I think, like, the top four is finished. What about the bottom part of the uh, eight? Any changes you can see, Mr. Wallis? Mm, um, I could see... Oh, no, they stuffed it. They stuffed themselves. I was going to say, I could see West Coast, <laughs> West, getting, Coast. West Coast losing, but then... North will just lose as well. Like, they've stuffed themselves. They, 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 they have stuffed themselves. Um, they, they played it beautifully for 23 weeks. I'm going to say... You ruined it. It's still alive, Peps. It's this still is alive. still alive. What's still alive? Richmond could still finish ninth. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know what would be if that happened? <gasps> oh, we'd be... <gasps> we'd be... Wooing all the way to just... It's fun. on. It's, it's on. on. Operation Ninth is on. I said Richmond wouldn't make finals, and I'm looking like a genius now. I also said Collingwood wouldn't make finals at the start of the year. I'm looking like a fool on that one. But I reckon, yeah, I reckon top four's done. The only thing that I could see is if GWS have a good win this week uh, against Carlton, they, mm-hmm. could, uh, they can get that second home final, which would make it very, very interesting. Could you imagine if it was a battle of the bridge? Oh. Exciting times. Exciting times. So, there's the ladder. For the second last time this year, we'll be looking at that. Next week will be the final ladder for the season. And then we are heading into a massive round of finals football action. Hey, j Dog, journey mm-hmm. to the draft. Our boy, Jacob Grant. Want to give you a heads up on that one as well, too. He's been invited to the state combine this year. Oh, yes, he has. So our great man, uh, Jacob Grant, playing for the Dandenong Stingrays, has been invited with 55 uh, players from all around the country will be going to the state combine to test their athletic prowess in front of recruiters from virtually every single club to hopefully get picked in the 2023 AFL draft. So we are pumped for it. Spoke to his old man today, uh, BG's Baron Grant. He is an absolute superstar, and he is more nervous than his son right now. So good luck to him from everybody here at Lace Out to uh, Jacob Grant for uh, the journey to the draft. All right, big guy, what mm-hmm. would you like to get into next? you you can call this next one. What do you want to do? No, let's do um, let's do let's do spin the magnets. Spin the magnets. Alrighty, so let's get into some magnets. Now, for people who haven't heard the magnets, the magnets are you're either getting dragged. Or you're actually getting three votes. So three votes is awarded for you, obviously, for the good things that have been happening on the weekend. 
And for the bad things on the weekend, you are going to get dragged. All right. Uh, what would you like to start with, Mr. Wallace? Drag um, or vote? Let's go drag. Let's go drag. All right. Are you there, Ron? Ron, are you there? Here are you off. Bloody All right, let's get into the drag side of things for this weekend's round of football, round 23 style. Oh, okay. First of all, Sam McClure from 3AW. You are a toss bag. For you on Sunday to say that only 40,000 people would even, less than 40,000 would turn up for the Melbourne Hawthorne game don't you look like a big flog, mate? Because over 50,000 turned up for that BCNA game between Melbourne and the Hawks. So just because you're a talented little redhead who hides behind a, tw a trade whisperer on Twitter, uh, don't go picking on teams because they think that you might not get crowds and only the big boys do. 50,000 on a perfect Sunday between those two teams, absolutely sensational. So how ugh, many? You. How many pets turned up? No pets. But I did see someone turn up with a dog the week before. Essendon and the Western Bulldog. Now, this is the worst loss for either of these clubs in a long, long time. J-Dog, whose was worse? Um, I'm... Oh, Essendon's. Essendon's was yep. worse? Yep. Why? Completely non-competitive from the bounce. Yep. And it's just it's it's twenty years now. Coming up to twenty years without a, without finals. Without they're a finals win. Twenty first birthday shoot. Yeah. Not winning a not winning a final. Yeah. Did you see the GWS banner? I did. <laughs> How good was it that they haven't played? They haven't won what? They haven't played final? No, they haven't won a final in their entire existence. That's yep. just, and they came out and smashed them. But that was putrid by the Western board. I was like, th th you sat there and you were looking at the phone and refreshing going, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. They couldn't, could they? West, I don't know if it was more like West Coast aren't going to do it, but they went and did it. How, how, how they went and lost to a team that has been putrid all year on their home deck, absolutely disgusting. And I'm hearing it here now. Charlie Keegan reckons the Bombers will win the flag from here. Uh, Fang Ali reckons the fucking Bulldogs by a mile. And that's what he exactly wrote. Uh, but yeah, they were just absolute. Dodoro must have photos. He must have those those photos in a um, one of those uh, locked boxes in the banks that you need two keys to get into. Because how he's kept his job for so long, like everybody else has gone at that club. They've even wanted to change the name and they haven't got rid of him. He's recruiting at poo. Lots of lists. They need to make changes, mate. Lots Big of time. lists. Oh, lists. Last, um, last one. And I've just said it a moment ago, J-Dog. West Coast, what a win. But just like gambling, what will it really cost you? Uh, yeah, that's and this, this is the thing, because I can't understand Western Bulldogs. I can't understand Western Bulldogs. I don't under, I don't understand how a list can be so electric and be so off and to be beaten by the bottom team when your finals is really on the line. Like they could have secured that they they probably have because of the other losses, but they could have secured their spot hook line sinker. They they could have, but they haven't. But they haven't. They haven't. And that's that's really disappointing. When you look at what they what they could have done and what they could have delivered, and it's tell me, what Western Bulldog supporter did not have that pencil as a win? Uh, There'd be zero. N no one, no one even had them close. <laughs> like no over one. over here, in Marvel, their home deck outside of Ballarat, to 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 roll over to, in a dog turn. It was terrible. It was it was putrid. I don't understand. Putrid. I don't understand beverages coaching. I don't think people have understood beverages coaching for years now. 
it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense how look they have got a talented list no doubt but how they serve that up on the weekend there is something wrong what you talk about melbourne when they lost by 186 to geelong like think of the margin yeah all right i would say that that loss is just as bad because it stood for absolutely nothing and melbourne had a shit list they've got a a really good list and they are oh. they're just, they're just I bipolar i don't understand it it's complete bipolar it's yep yeah. some changes need to be made and and like rowan smith left and apparently that's caught some angst they lost stephen king lost ashley hansen as their assistants you keep bringing in new people but uh, bevo i just think that there's got to be a time i think he's been there what no Nine years he's been there. This is the team that played in the grand final. Two years ago. Two years ago. Two years ago. It's nuts. It's nuts. But um, yeah, that that was that was pretty pretty brutal seeing that. But um, even West Coast, like, what's it really cost you? It's cost you number one. It's cost you, like I said, holding the rest of the league at ransom to say, you know what? Here you go, boys. If you want this number one pick, what are you going to offer? Now they've got nothing. Now yeah, they've got a number three pick because if Mackay goes over to Essendon, which is everybody saying on Mega Bucks, they're going to get a first round compensation pick after their first pick, which will be one and two. So they've literally dropped. I would say they've dropped two spots in the draft, plus how many draft picks by cashing in that number that uh, draft pick would they have picked up? I reckon mm. they've lost two top three draft picks out of that completely. Yeah. Absolutely um, pathetic. But you know what, J-Dog? At the end of every rainbow, there's a pot of gold. But in case of the AFL, when it comes to the magnets, we're always going to be handing out. Three votes. Let's get some three votes. And I've got some three votes to give out. Right here. I just mentioned a little bit earlier. The BCNA game. Pink Lady was back and bigger than ever with 50,000 people attending. There were just pink beanies everywhere, pink scarves everywhere. It was beautiful to see the Melbourne Football Club and the BCNA for highlighting such an important cause and continuing to do so for over 25 years. So that's magnificent to see that. St Kilda and GWS, by goodness, they are playing cracking footy. We've spoken about it before throughout the year as well To Both lock in final spots and they're playing the type of footy, and I think you mentioned it, that is going to cause problems for teams inside the eight. Mm -hmm. And top four, I reckon. Damien Hardwick to the Suns. Finally, they will be the biggest show on the Gold Coast. Well, six years, apparently a million dollars a year. He reckons that 80% of the team that they've got running around now will make up their uh, first grand final premiership team. Um, I'm so pumped for it. I know Tommy Roker, he, he has not... He, he's, he's literally bought shares in Kleenex because that's how excited he's been over the last two days while that announcement went live. Like... He doesn't need you, Porn. Tommy Roker needs uh, just to watch the replay of the press conference, and that'll do it for him. But that was absolutely uh, mind-numbing, what uh, that's going to do. So it's awesome. Geelong, it's the end of an era. Now, yes, they lost on the weekend, but I want to put this in perspective. They've got a record that many teams would dream to have. They've only missed finals once under Chris Scott. Finally time for a rebuild that we've been waiting for, but they have been sensational as a club. Like, tell me, if you're a Geelong supporter... We've spoken about heartbreak. We've spoken about loss that lots of our clubs, both of ours, have gone through for years. And this mob just keeps serving up finals appearances, prelim appearances, grand final appearances, and flags. They've been absolutely sensational. So, yep, they're going to be making some changes. A lot of those over 30 players will have to move on next year. I know Dangerfield's still going around. Hawkins will still go around. Uh, but there's a few others that are going to fall off uh, the edge of the cliff. There won't, there won't be one club who wouldn't love to have a third of their success. Oh, I, I tell you what, I know one in red and black who would love a, 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 a fingernail of success that they've had. <laughs> uh, and last, I don't know if anyone has actually seen this one, and I'm going to put a link in the show notes and also the, the, the description in our YouTube page. But the AFL documentary on the Demons 2023 uh, AFLW Premiership, it was really well done to the AFL Studios team who put that together. A great insight into the players uh, and the club during, uh, leading up to, and on grand final day as well too. It's really, it only goes for about 19 minutes, but it's really, really 
well put together and um each of the people who represented the club and themselves um uh, was awesome so really well done so that is my magnets that is who's been dragged and that is who's got the three votes for round 23. lovely all righty um j-dog yes you know what i love about footy what's that can i just say yeah. to the listeners yeah last week we got a copy <laughs> We got a copyright strike on our YouTube video. We're still learning. We're still we're all learning these things. We have gone onto YouTube the if algorithm. you haven't been. The algorithm. We're still learning, and we did get a copyright strike. So now Peps and I are gonna have to go back and create <laughs> create our own music because we uh we copped a copyright strike. Yep. So if you, if you so you know we normally have something around the lines of you know you know when you leave me now. Um, or um, you know, here comes the money. Maybe. We're going to have to record that ourselves now, unfortunately. But yeah. hey, I've mm -hmm. got to state this: um, bags, bags, bags. Jesse Hogan, nine versus Essendon, seventeen marks he had. That's good. It was good. <laughs> it was. It was. The Hulk was back. It was good. Oh, he was good too. But you know, you know, it was even like that was wrapped. I was wrapped. I was hoping he kicked the ten, and he had a shot for the tenth and passed it. Mate, you've got to be greedy, Hulk. Got to be take greedy. It, take it on. Hopefully, he took the contract to Fremantle. You've got to be greedy. Hey, and uh, Nick Larkey, again, another six versus Richmond. Could you imagine if Nick Larkey played in a team that had some success? <laughs> like, I think he's fourth on the Coleman medal for the team that's second last. Yeah. He's a gun. I love him. I love him. Absolutely love him. He's just a freak. Freak, 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 freak. Well, who knows? They might they might be able to do something at draft time next year. Get some support around him. Who knows? Oh, you reckon? No. Clarko will be back. No doubt. No doubt. Well, All right, big better. guy. It's uh, time for the big one. Time for yep. the big one. It's uh, we still haven't got a name for this this segment yet. So if you've got one in the chat, skis, throw it at skis. But uh, it's the main talking point. We're just going to go. We're going to call this one um, today. CEO, not CEO for the day. We're going to call it. Um, do you want to start there or do you want to start on our take on the weekend and the controversy? Well, okay. Because well, we, we, we did get, we did get, we did yeah. get messages saying, boys, what do you think? What's, what are you going to talk about on your show? So I kind of feel like we have to sort of talk about it, Peps, All a little right. bit. So I reckon we just call it the crows were robbed because they were. I was in the car driving, um, driving when, when this occurred. And to hear it live, it was just like, what has, what has happened? What has happened? What has happened, like, on the radio? Absolutely, the crows were robbed. Right in front of me. Right in front of me. That's never going to get old. Never. And then when I went back and watched exactly what happened, they were robbed. Peps? They were robbed. Can I, can I... I'm I'm not one for making big declarations like you, like Collingwood not making the eight. Anyway, okay. My declaration is that is the most horrendous decision I have ever seen in my history of watching AFL. What about VFL? Well, I don't. This is an AFL podcast. Okay, well it is. But do you go back as far as this the, the the. Was Harms? Was the ball out? Yeah. Or was it in? And the second one, there's actually probably three of them. The second one, did Libba's goal go through in the 1997 prelim against Adelaide? Yeah, that's a good one. And the other one, which was the 2002 AFL Grand Final, did Anthony Rocker's set shot go through when they called it a point? Post high, yeah. Mm. Um, no, I so saw this, this, this is the biggest because we have, we have the technology. <laughs> yeah, this is like, this is like a criminal, criminal going to court. He's got the shooting gun, but because they forgot to identify them correctly or read their rights, they got off. He did yeah. it, but they got off. Peps. Yep. What about the 2018 showdown? Did Jenkins hit the goalpost? 
Uh, it did, but this is still bigger. This is uh, the biggest thing I've ever seen. It is big. It was massive. It was so massive. peps. I'm looking at the chat now. Everybody's just going like Jules Julio's going nuts. Davy Salt's going nuts. Craigie Jones is going nuts. Tory Williams is going nuts. Everybody is going nuts about this one because it's the first time in a long time that I've seen something happen where it's so clear that it was wrong, yet they couldn't do anything about it. Yeah, it is, it's, it's the one thing across probably all of the AFL that we're all united on. That umpiring is shit? No, no, no. That, oh. this, that this, is the, this is the biggest rort in the AFL. Yep. Like, we have our teams, we have our motors, but this is the one thing we all go, the Crows were absolutely robbed. <laughs> were robbed. But, Peps, there is, there is a wider implication to this, and that's probably the serious nature of, that, of this yep. conversation, and that really is around... Um, there, there's obviously betting implications on this one here. Lots of people would have lost money, and there's, there's sponsorships there. There is also financial rewards for making the eight that you get by just being there. There are sponsors that are attached to these. There are contract clauses. There are players who have contract clauses to this sort of um, uh, stuff up by the AFL. I do feel sorry for the umpire because the AFL basically had pinned it on him, which is fair. But what recourse does the AFL have? They can't just reward Adelaide the win because there's still two minutes to play. Um, so I would say this is, that, that goal umpire is the AFL version of Joe the cameraman. I was thinking the same thing. He just got, he just got hung out to dry. So they've had a bit of a think about this. and I was really fascinated to hear what all the different footy shows said. How would they do it? How would they handle it, etc.? You can't review every point. I get that one. Uh, I know they review every goal because they've got an opportunity to go back. Yep. Uh, I like Jared Wheatley's take on this. And it's pretty much where it comes to the NHL. If they're not too sure, play continues. And then when there's a stoppage, they then go, halt. we found it was actually a, a goal or a point. And then they take it back to where it goes. And then they restart the clock at the time that it should be. So they add the time back on. Mm -hmm. So I think for those ones, especially for something like this, like this was, this wasn't like a straight point we get, but this was something that on the second review, you saw it straight away go, it, it hasn't missed anything. It, it's missed everything, sorry. It hasn't hit the post. They've got it wrong. Yeah. All they needed to do is go field umpire, next stoppage, stop the clock, tell them that it was actually a goal. We'll go back to the center of the ground. Yeah. We'll put the clock to a minute and seven seconds, I think, or a minute 17 or a minute seven to go, and we'll go from there. I think that's the only way that you can do it. Or you just scrap the whole thing. Because it, it, it felt... It smelt funny the incident it happened because not one player was resetting for a kick in. Not one, not 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 the Swans, not Adelaide. They were all thinking it's a goal. They knew it was a goal. Peps, you played football. You played three hundred plus of the wonderful game. Three seventy seven. You know when the balls hit the post. You know you've kicked a goal when you haven't kicked a goal. Oh, mate. If you play football at suburban grounds, when you hear the ping of the ball, the leather against the steel pole, you know it's hit. Yeah. All right? You don't have to be an idiot. Now, the now, umpire did have... A, it, it was a hard thing because it, it, it did curve inside the pole. Yep. I think he was probably in the best position to call it. He just got it wrong. But I just think it's just such... It's such a big penalty, isn't it? It's so cruel. It's just it's cruel. cruel. And the other cruel aspect of it, and we don't take this into account, is that he's standing behind a raucous crowd. Yeah. So he can't even, he wouldn't have even heard it. Home crowd. Yeah, he wouldn't have even heard the ball hit. Now, I like Matthew Nix come out and said, you know what, we probably gave it away in the first or second quarter, etc. cetera. Uh, don't, uh, look, I, I like what he said, but he's had the right to, his team had the right to come back all the way to get to that situation. They fought. Mind you, they did kick four goals eight in the last quarter. So, but they still got that opportunity. They did everything right. They've won the game and they've had that taken off them because of a rule that really doesn't sort of make sense. It sucks. Would it be that it's a goal until we can prove it's touched? 
That sucks. Rather than the other way around. It just sucks because the AFL come out Sunday and said, we've made a mistake, we did it, but we're not going to change anything. No. <laughs> it just sucks. They can't change it now. They're going to have to do it at the end of the season because the whole process, and, and the, the whole, or it could happen in a final or it could happen in a grand final. Well, there's no reason why it can't. It might not even be at the final siren. It could be at quarter time. It could happen anywhere throughout. Remember Tom Hawkins hit the post, and this is where this all started back in 2000 and... Uh, nine. Nine, yeah. When 2009, where he hit the post, but they gave it in. It, it, it went off. It was like the ball of the century. It just turned at right angles off the post, and they just they gave it to him. Yeah. So that made us start to think, well, you know, the Crows were robbed through, the, through bad umpiring, and I reckon one of the reasons why is that there has not been a head of football at the AFL since Brad Scott went to Essendon. So we had a bit of a think about it, and we thought, okay, what about if we were head of football for the day? Okay, so what I wanted to do is, Jamie, if you were head of football for the day and you can literally change anything you want when it comes to the AFL. So people in the chat, people on the YouTube channel, put them in your comments. If you could change anything you want when it comes to the AFL for a day and it stays, yep. what would it be? Do you, would you like to start? I like to start. You can start. Controversial. Go for it. Six umpires. Why? I am a big fan of having... I would go two, two, and four. Hang on, that's more than six. Two, okay. two, 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 and two. Okay. Two in the forward line, two in the center, two in the back line. Okay. Tori just says, get rid of the umpires. So, you're in disagreements there. <laughs> All right, eight umpires. All right, interesting. No, no, six, six, six. Oh, sorry, sorry, six, six umpires. Six. Yeah. Okay. What else? Um, red card. Okay, the cards. I think the cards need to be a thing played. Yep. Um, yeah, would you just have red? No, and I'd give red, just red. red. Straight red. Straight red. Straight red. So you're off? Yep. Does that mean that they're automatically out for the next game? No, just five minutes. Have it. Five minutes? Yep. It's not really a red, that's a, that's a rotation. Oh, well. Maybe yellow then red then. You've, you've what, changed your what, mind. What, what, what's it for though? I want it seen for. Well, just whenever the umpire feels like they have to get a yellow card, go have a, go have a cool down. Red is what's concussions. The, what's, what's the red is concussions. Red oh. is when you've physically injured someone and you've got them off. Red card. Okay, so if you're looking at something like uh, like uh, the Andrew Gaff. Sort yeah, that's a red card. That's, that's a red, red card. card. Uh, like um, oh, Tom Stewart on Taranto, red card when he ran past and just elbowed yep. him and put him in the next week. Red what card. Harry Rowan on Jeremy Cameron. Would no. you red card? No, fair play. Oh, otherwise known as a, just a card for for that redhead. Uh, right. No, fair play. Uh, okay. No. Fair so that's enough. one of them. Yep. They're the only. Oh no! I got one more rule. Yep. Because the rest, the rest, I haven't got rules. They're just, they're just things. Hmm. I, I want to see draws. Yep. No longer a thing. What I do want to see is penalty shootout. Ooh. Okay. I like it. All right. So from how far and where? I want, I want from fifty. Mm. And I want it to be a game of donkey. I want it. I want it like that. I don't mind the penalty shootout, but you know where I'd go? Where? 30 metres straight out in front. And you watch how many people seize up. 30 metres in front. Yeah, I don't mind that. I just want a penalty shootout. You, uh, yeah, I don't mind it. I don't mind it. I don't mind the penalty shootout. Anyway, they're my rules. They're your rules. What okay. do you got? What's your rules? Uh, I've got a couple of them at the moment. So a couple of them that have come up is uh, from Tory Williams, just get rid of the umpire descent rule. Well, they sort of did that on the ra- on the weekend. I don't know if anybody saw uh, Maynard go, but absolutely burko. <laughs> uh, Craigie J, love what he's got here. Pull the GF from the G. It's disadvantage. It's a disadvantage to interstate teams that no teams can play at the G until finals. Okay, I'll take the last line out, but he has got some merit there. I I agree. Yep. Cut a minimum of four teams from Victoria. <laughs> okay. Um, 
Rightio. Uh, get rid of umpires. Uh, that's about it. All right. Oh, there we go. Troy's saying go the other way. Anything goes through the posts. Well, can you just let me get back to mine? I think yeah. she's dead here. You get through to yours. Well, she's got to count anything that goes through the middle of the goal to be six points, even if it's touched inside the goal. Do away with it. Do away I with the rule. Touched, I don't know about, but I'm sort of leaning on that too. So, I actually have as my CEO rules for the day. Here's the first one. Goal posts. All right? If it hits the goal post and goes in the goals, it's a goal. Yep. yep. If it hits the goal post and goes back into play, play on. AFLX rules. Yep. And uh, if it goes through the points, just a point. That doesn't change. Okay. So it's only if it goes through the big bits. Can it hit the point post and bounce in and be a point? Uh, if it hits the point post, that's still a throw-in. Okay. Okay. So those rules don't sort of get affected. They're pretty right. simple. Right. right. Yep. On the pool, it's out. Okay. Yep. So I like those ones. All right. No more prior opportunity. Because prior opportunity is an absolute joke now. You get tackled and players hold the ball to themselves and fall on the ground. There is no there is no rhyme or reason why they have to move the ball on. And it's just causing more stoppages. If you get tackled and you're holding the ball to yourself and go to ground, that is holding the ball. Oh, so you're saying you're saying you want it basically like touch football. I basically want if you get tackled, you've got to get rid of the ball. Don't hold it to yourself. Oh, That's I thought you over. were meaning potentially no. get rid of the rule and players can do what they want to do. Nope. So if you get tackled You've got to get rid of it. Don't hold it. That's it. All right? And if you make an attempt, that's gone as well too. The number of times people have been tackled and dropped the ball and they don't even get close to their foot and they go, oh, they've made an attempt. I'm sorry. If you're not good enough to get it on your foot, you've dropped the ball. It's a free kick. All right? Okay. Hands in the back. Get rid of it. Go back to the old rule. Hands in the back used to be the forearm only. Got to go back to the forearm because this is causing too many issues now where players are diving. And you can actually monitor that. You can't monitor that. What's a push and what's a brace? Like, what's a bump and what's a brace? So go back to the old school. You've got to use your forearm and not your hands in the back. Okay. That would make it a lot easier to umpire. There's no more subs. So we get rid of the sub. Five on the bench. And if you lose one, too bad, too sad. If it then comes to five on four, big deal. That's the way it rolls. So you're saying roll back the rules two years? Just roll back the... No, no. They, they went from four. Then they brought in a sub. Because theoretically, they can do that now anyway. Yeah. There's no reason why they can't leave that person on the bench and just let them roll. But I just, no, I just think that the sub, we're not soccer, just no. Nah. So just go back to five. Just go back to five on the bench, that's it. And if you lose one or two, too bad. It's a game of attrition. Are you also there's looking no, at... No particip- cause the, you know what the sub is to me? It's a participation medal. Are you also looking... Oh, it's also if a player's going back from injury. But are you also looking uh, at yeah, then the no, interchange... No, no. Interchange oh. rotations? Same. No, we don't increase it. So leave them at whatever is now. One, 75. What is it? 75. 75, 70, there we go. 70, yep, yep. I don't know. Yep. 90, 75, I don't know where 90, it is these days. Well, I don't care what it is, but just leave it as it is. You just okay. get an extra player. Okay. All right. Uh, this one's a bit controversial, but let's be honest. It's about that right now. Uh, the man on the mark. Okay, so at the moment, it's the stand rule. Yes. Which I just get rid of the stand rule. I can't stand it. It's a blight. It's just crap. Because the player goes off the mark and he has to stand there and watch. Because once again, the umpire is making the decision whether they can move or not. So I'd say just get rid of that altogether. What get rid I of the man on the mark. Pardon? No, no, the man on the mark. Just get rid of stand. Okay. If they're not going to get rid of stand, if a player's having a shot within 50 and the player's standing within 50, he can move. Because I don't know if you saw the one on the weekend. Uh, no, I've got to remember which game it was. It was, I think it was Jeremy Cameron and Maynard. Maynard was on the, on, on, literally standing there. And Jeremy Cameron did his whole big run out to the arc, onto the left-hand side. And he had to stand there as he ran past him. Uh, yes, I have seen that a few just, times. It's just looks, it looks stupid and it is stupid. So you stand there, uh, but you're allowed to move if it's inside the 50. Okay. Okay. So, not, not too confusing for players to know when in, oh, inside, no, outside. They get it wrong now. No, it's, it's simple. It's inside 50, you can move. Okay, all right. right. Simple as that. Uh, the last kick between the 50s, just out of bounds. Just, just, it's, it's just out of bounds. Because most of the time, that's when the insufficient intent, and don't give me you know what insufficient intent is. Do you know what the word intent means, umpires? You don't know what's going on inside my mind, whether I deliberately wanted to make the ball bounce at right angles 
45 metres from the boundary. It does not work that way. Peps, we made a rule. We're not going to object to each other's questions here. I know that. Mm-hmm. But do you feel that's where we are now anyway? Yeah, that's where I think we are. Just make the rule official. Just make it official. Okay. Make it official. All right. And no more ruck nominations. That goes completely out the window as well too. Two people go up for the ruck. And if a third one goes up, free kick. Simple as that. Because I've been watching games where the umpire, instead of just throwing the ball up and letting any two people, they're waiting for the two lumbering giants who are 40, 50 metres away to jog in. And then they are, then they go, Max, Braden, and then they throw it up. Like, just okay. throw it up. That's the issue with the game. There's too much stoppage because of the rules causing constraints around All the right. too. So there's that one there. Uh, the other one, which I know won't get any traction, but uh, the one I don't like is when the fullback just runs out of fullback. You want to run out of fullback now? You've got to kick the ball to yourself like they used to because that's a skill in itself. But this oh, is all running straight out of fullback. Okay. I don't like it. And if you speak to a lot of people, they will like that. I also have a change I want to make to the Brownlow medal. Okay. We're going, so we're moving beyond the game now. We're going we're into other game. things. We're going to the Brownlow medal. Okay. All right. Because I reckon since maybe Scott Wind. Oh, you're going back now. Right. I'm going yeah. Out. When was the last non midfielder to win it? Exactly my point. Probably, yeah, I can't think of one. So, this is what's going to happen. The umpires at the moment give three, two, and one votes. Correct? Correct. Correct. Right. They're now going to be giving three, two, and one votes, but they have to give three to a backman, three to a midfielder, and three to a forward. Two okay. So they're going to be giving three sets of three. Three sets of three? Three sets of three. Three sets of two, three, three sets, sets of one. one. Yep. Yeah. So here's a perfect example, right? The GWS game on the weekend, Tom Green had... I think 39 touches or 40. But Jesse Hogan kicked nine. Who are they going to probably give it to? But probably Tom Green. We're talking Jesse about Hogan half, we're talking half the field getting votes. getting votes, Peps. Yep. Another example was in the Melbourne Hawks game. Melksham shut out Sicily virtually for the entire game. He should be rewarded for that, but he won't because it'll be some midfielder getting all the votes. So they give three threes. Two twos and a one. So there, maybe Adam Goods was the last one to, to roll it out. I think when he won his first one, 2003. All right. So what happens though is throughout the year, they count up the twos and ones. And that's an ongoing, you know, who's one, who's got the twos and the ones from every single week. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that goes all the way to Brownlow night. So on Brownlow night, what's going to happen is you're going to see Jamie Wallace has got uh, 38 votes. Already coming into the night. 27, Chris Pepper's on, yep. Yep. And then we normally would go three votes for every game, but those three votes would be the three sets of three. So they go three votes, Jay Dunstall. Three votes, Mark Rusciuto. Three votes, Jay Wallace. And it just means that people like uh, Charlie Kerno, who's dominated this year, like he's won games virtually off his own boot, but he won't get he won't get the three votes for that. Nick Larkey kicked six on the weekend, but he won't get votes because it always goes to the midfielder because that's what they see. So personally, I think they need to give votes for every part of the ground. Okay, it's making me uncomfortable. That's so it must, it about. might it might mean it might mean it's okay. This is what it's all about. And here's the last one too. When it comes to the brown low, and this is probably the biggest one. The award is normally given to the best and fairest. Drop the fairest. It's just the best. Just the best? I don't mind that one. Because of all of the controversy now with whether it's the sling tackle, dangerous tackle, um, anything concussion related, bump related, etc. There are incidents that people are getting rubbed out for which really they, they shouldn't it could be just the other person that's caused it. Now, we know that there's sling tackles that do cause damage. We get that. But there have been a lot of things that people have been rubbed out for that are, are, are minuscule, that, like the mandatory week. Yeah, the standards are higher So now. the standards are, are a lot higher. So it literally works like this. 
uh, there's no best and fairest. It's just best. You get votes. And if you miss weeks, you miss weeks. Simple as that. Now, in okay. retrospect, I would then go back and say to Chris Grant, here is your brown low medal. Okay. Because I think what he got rubbed out for compared to what people get rubbed out for now, now is, is a lot worse if they get a week for. He was Correct. stiff as well too. So I just think that just get rid of the, the, the fairest, just keep it the best because the game is under so much scrutiny, scrutiny right now. Uh, it's going to make it harder and harder and harder. And there will be a time where someone, you know, Cripps was the perfect example. He got off when he should have been suspended. He, he won okay. when he should have been suspended. So they are all of my changes. If I was head of football for a day, that's a lot we've had to squeeze in for a day that I would roll out. What do you think? All right, I'm going to come on and add on. That, oh, go for it. Um, I want to have... I want to have more on-ground cameras, whether it's GoPros or there's something we can put on players. I want that. I want that. I want to see a ball coming in. I want to see player movement on the ground. I want to be more in the game. I don't know how it happens, but that's what I want. The next thing, yep. Peps, I want the AFL to start rewarding the fans. What I want to see is the AFL start giving golden tickets to 10 thousand people for grand final day so by going through the gates there's a golden ticket opportunity for 10,000 fans so to get people to start coming mm -hmm. more 10,000 seats available for the AFL grand final that season through the AFL golden ticket and so what and that's spread amongst all the grounds it, it yes and it could be under cups it could be there's a there's a reward there's a something there's a there's a there's a something going on so i reckon you cups would be too hard you could find but i it. reckon the golden ticket is exactly that when you go in and scan your ticket you might get a woo 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 and you get a golden ticket happening to something yeah. or you get because i think i think it's or for it's, anybody it's, turns up to a game during the week they release 15 names who got a golden ticket yep and because this is a couple of things you hear old people talk about in, in the 70s and 80s and even the 90s a little bit. They say, oh, grand finals were accessible for they the were. fans. Now they're not accessible. That's all corporates. Now corporate, or you've got to have a gold level membership in either MCC or <laughs> AFL or, or whatever. Yep. Um, so I think that'll bring the crowd, the, bring the fans back in. Also, I think I've, I think I've unlocked how to make this work. We have been talking about a National Reserves League for as long as we can remember. Why don't we make game day, bring it back, bring back the reserves oh, and yeah. bring back AFLW yeah. on a Saturday? Perfect. Oh, sorry, not on a Saturday, but on the same game day experience. Yeah, so do you play like, the reserves beforehand and then... The Whether it's reserve, then, like, reserves at 10, AFLW or whatever, you're after. Yeah, just mix, make it make it a thing. So then you actually get to play against other AFL reserve yeah. teams and AFLW get a chop out as well because they get they to get then crowds. be more exposed. Yeah, there should be more AFLW games before games. Oh, I, I agree with that. And I think reserves games, I love going to the... It, it makes people want to go to the footy earlier and it gives them a reward. You know, I don't care about... Captain Columbo, how many backflips he can do before the game. And, and I don't care about any of that pre-game bullshit. Just give me footy. The yep. best form of entertainment is 36 people running around on a field kicking a ball. That's what we go yep. there for. We don't go for the jungle drums. We don't go for the songs that people play. We don't go for um, Take Me Home Country Road. Well, it just it fixes the problem that, we, that, that a lot of these – interstate clubs talk about and also Victorian clubs talk about is the, the difference between the reserves level and AFL level is so great that when the players come up it's it's it takes them five games to, to adapt it is this way they play AFL level reserves and um oh, can, you, can I even throw one more before sure. we before we do a quick wrap up of the, of the games from this weekend uh, I would scrap the under 18 competition Oh, just yeah. Bring back, just bring back under-19s for every team. Zoning, do it that way. Because the under Come 18, back old under school. 19, the under-19s, as I know, the Coats League, is not what it was 10 years ago. Private schools and so forth are taking over. Just bring it back to, um, to under-19s, get the zoning back in, do it that way. So they play junior, yeah. you know, they play under-19s, 
they come up through the like they talk about these NGA academies, etc. They could use yeah. that as yeah. stepping stones. Yep. yep. So there we go. There, there is our. I think we. I think we had a list of something around the the, the ten, the ten oh. changes that you and I would make to the AFL, the game day, and all that experience. So. Leave us a comment. Ooh. What do you think about that? Funny enough, I did get one, yeah. and it's all Craigie Jones has brought this one out, and he says, what about Good. the draft? Okay, well, after the draft, I would simply, simply what's happened after this year, we have to go to a draft. We have to go to a lottery system. We have to go to a lottery system, just like the NBA, just like the NFL. All that. We, we've got to go to it, because at the moment, it doesn't work. It, it's, it's, it's crap. I'm, I'm I'm not against it, but I'm not. But yeah, okay, all right. I, I'm I'm no no peps. Most there is no opposition from me. There's no argument. It, but I would prefer just something little than an automatic. You get it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um. Oh, sorry. He meant in regards so, to your under uh, under nineteens comp. Um. Yeah, they they can still they still get drafted. They could they could still get drafted. They just play it. They just play at a local club or they play at a, an AFL club to get um that experience. And then, but they still can be drafted and moved to other clubs. But there might be a discount if they decide to pick one up from their own team. I don't know. Okay. Cool. Leave us a comment. What do you think yeah. about those ones okay. there? Add some oh, more. I know Tommy Roke is saying that the Suns Academy is the best in Australia. Well, yeah, that's great. You know, this, this year? year? Next year. Too bad. The team can't do anything on the field. Ever. All right, wrap up. All right, one week at a time, J-Dog. Let's have, a look. Oh, the games. Let's have a look at the games from the weekend. Collingwood yes. versus Geelong on the Friday night. Thoughts, sorry, Collingwood versus Brisbane. Brisbane. Thoughts, feelings about that one? It ticks both columns. You do not want to play Brisbane at home and Collingwood looking yeah, shaky. They, they looked really putrid, I must admit. Um, I think Collingwood... Collingwood? No Dacos. No Dacos. It's not even that, j Dog. I've got a feeling Collingwood are really reminding me of Melbourne from last year. They just look like they've spent all their petrol tickets and they, they're they not playing good footy at the moment at all. At okay. all. Um, yeah, he's not good. Yeah, Robbo, not not good at all too. So, um, But, yeah, Brisbane. Still, there's still question marks on Brisbane, I must admit. 100%. All right. Uh, Richmond versus North. It was 29 points. Hey, Cochin's finished up. Rewalt's finished up as well, too. I think Richmond have finished up. Um, I don't really... Their kids are not too crash hot on, I must admit. But I do think North have just jumped into the box seat. Like, how how awesome are they? They just yeah, amaze I, me. Do you know what? The game for me was just watching Cochin, Cochin and what's his name play, uh, Rewalt play for the last time for yeah. me. And I the result didn't matter really too oh, much really. to me. Yeah, I agree. And I just think North, um, they're going to get a number one. They're going to be getting Harley Reid. That, that's the way I look yep. at it. And maybe Curtin as well too, which is just setting themselves up. Reid, Sheasel, Wardlow, um, Davies Union. Larky. Oh, Larky, stop. Yeah. So maybe it's not a good time for you to move on, Ben Mackay, but you've got to do what's right for you. Uh Gold Coast Suns versus Carlton. Carlton by four points. Really great. Geez, great I was game. cheering, cheering the Gold Coast Suns home. They, they did everything they possibly could, and Carlton won by four points. They both kicked the same amount of goals, so it was just bad kicking. Could have been a four-goal win if they kicked straight, but they didn't. Um, and I think that's where Gold Coast are. They, 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 they're on the cusp, but they're just not good enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um... I think Dim will be pretty happy seeing what they put up against Carlton, do, the hottest team in the NFL. And I do think Carlton, that's their ninth win in a row. Correct. Do you know they've only won uh, three of those have been teams in the top eight? Let's not, let's not bring facts well, into this. Get on board. True. It is da, true. Da, 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 da. Um, <laughs> St Kilda versus Geelong. We spoke about this a little bit earlier. St Kilda, playing, they're going all right at the moment, the Saints. They've got their mojo back. And... Um, Osteitis, uh, osteoarthritis is seeding for the Geelong Cats. They're going to be losing quite a few at the end of the year, unfortunately. Yeah, that looks slow. Yeah, That's all it was. Very, very slow. Uh, I'll tell you who was slow as well, too, was the goal umpire who uh, gave the win to the Sydney Swans. We've spoken about this one at length already. <laughs> Western Bulldogs versus West Coast Eagles. The West Coast Eagles won by seven oh, points. You've, you've, jumped, you've jumped over 
Okay, yeah, yep. cool. No, no, it's all good. Oh, I did, all good. Sorry, I jumped over the GWS versus Essendon game. I did slip over that by 126 points. I don't know if anyone heard me, but it was 126 points where Big Jay Hogan kicked nine. And that's what I said. Whose result was worse, the Western Bulldogs or Essendon on the weekend? Yeah, uh, look. 20, 25 goals versus five goals. Just <laughs> it was go- it was messy. It was going to get messy like real fast, and that's exactly what yeah, they got. And the, 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 even with that, the dogs are still coming in as a as a worse loss. Yeah, chat too. So it's cool. Um, Melbourne versus Hawthorne. Like I said, I was at this game. Uh, geez, the Hawks. They've got a they've got a really bright future. They are going to be guns. And, I, and I've criticised Sam Mitchell many many times over this year. And last year as well too, with what he's been serving up. But they, they know how to play footy. They 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 got a system. They their foot skills were sublime. Um, I was really happy when Newcomb wasn't playing and Lewis because I reckon they almost might have been the difference. But they were just they yeah. were awesome. But Melbourne just did what they had to do. They had to get the win. We were very very nervous at one stage, but they they got the win. They locked in the top four. And the last game of the weekend, which was Port by sixteen over Fremantle, I'll hand that one over to you. Mm, nothing special. We just, just, just won. It was like it, it was a nothing special game. Like it was a really like free man would just play a really defensive type of football, and Port just had to grind it out. For you guys, um, Hawks just had a lot, just a last quarter fade out, and you guys ran at the uh, top. I don't know whether it was a fade out. I just think that the grind. Melbourne did yeah. what they did. They grind, and then they 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 ran away with it. But it was, uh, can I just say? Go for it. Overall, other than retirements and stuff like that. It was a pretty lame week of football. Uh, there, there weren't too uh, many. There weren't too many massive surprises. The week before was like yeah, there, there, that was pretty much that was. But look, even this week is exciting. Like if you think about this, you've got for for one week at a time. Um, if we go into our tips for this week, and then we've got the fan tail in a moment. Essendon versus Collingwood. Like that's not going to be. You know, which Essendon's going to show up? Are they going to redeem themselves? Will Collingwood fall over again? Hawks versus Fremantle. That's no guarantee for Fremantle to win that. Hawks could. Could go again, and we want the Hawks to win, so they drop down another position. The mains Melbourne get picked four. North versus the Suns. I think the Suns will win that. I, don't, I think North will be playing the Little League that weekend. Or they might yeah. even get some yeah. of the Geelong players to play for them. <laughs> well, how about this one? Brisbane versus the Saints. You know, if the Saints win this, potentially Brisbane can drop to third. Well, that's what I'm hoping yep, for. That's what you're hoping for. But that means mm-hmm. that you go to second if you win yours. And that means, but I don't think your percentage is going to be good enough to go to second. Uh, if, no, if they have to lose. Yep. We have to win that for lose. Is the percentage okay, though? No, I just, by, on points, we go, to, we go to 70 points, they'll go to 764. Okay, cool. so you win that one, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, Geelong versus Western Bulldogs. Like, after last week, none of those two teams are guaranteed. West Coast versus Adelaide. Well, Adelaide should win that one. Port versus Richmond, which you should win. And if you take second spot, Back to times. Melbourne yep. versus Sydney. I have never wanted to not win a game any more than today. Because if we lose, we potentially play Collingwood at the G. We win, we might have to play Brisbane at Brisbane. I don't yeah. want that. And then Carlton versus GWS. Imagine if GWS break the streak of Carlton. It's just an exciting last round of footy, mate. They should just play all the games at once. Look, that'd be the best. They, look, some of the results from this week have just completely stuffed it. We'll, we'll, we'll look, we'll look, we we'll potentially looking at going into the final round with three spots in the top eight undecided. And the top but four not locked in either. because those dickheads lost it on the weekend. It's kind of it's kind of wrapped it up. Wankers with anchors. Wankers. Wankers with anchors. Hey everybody, your favourite part of the segment before we wrap up oh, yes. the massive week of round twenty three reviews. I'm handing it over to my co-host with the most, you know him, Jamie the J-Dog Wallace, for this week's fan tale. <laughs> I can't put a song to it. We'll get copyright strike. Yeah, I know. We'll work it out. We'll do something. All right. Oh, you. All right. I've literally got one here that this could actually become one of the ones that perhaps we actually, um, we may not know the answer okay. to. Oh, no. It's giving it away already. All right. Who am I? Born in Sydney in 1983. 
She was raised in the Australian rural town of... God, why does this get me? Gunita? Gunita? Before, but moved to Brisbane for her schooling. Her modelling career took off after winning a Doddy magazine competition at the age of 13 in 1997. She has since appeared in many Australian fashion campaigns. In 2006, she relocated to the United States where she signed a lucrative cosmetic contract with Maybelline. She was the she was first she was the first Australian Australian Victoria Secret model and currently lives in New York with her Yorkshire Terrier called Frankie. She and ya da 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 Orlando Bloom have a son together. Dot dot dot. Who am I? I like it, J Dog. I like it. Leave it in oh, the I got another one. Leave it in the comments if you know who Jamie's fantail is. Ladies and gentlemen. I got one more. What? I got one more. No. We, oh. I got a double. I got oh, a double. We're running out of time. All right. All right. Born in Scotland, 1956. He moved to Australia in 1961. An apprentice iron smelter whose love for music led him to join a band which later became known as Cold Chisel. After Cold Chisel split in 1983, he wanted to launch a successful career um, even had even play with some tin lids and uh, other stuff and had a song and uh, something debut in Irish Hearts in 2010. Yeah. I am... Yeah. Dot, dot, yeah. dot. All right, and that is, ladies and gentlemen, your Lace Out Round 23 review. Like I said, if you haven't joined us on the Facebook page, give us a like. If you haven't liked us on and subscribed on the YouTube page, do it. It went nuts last week, and we do it for you guys each and every week. Jamie, you have been absolutely sensational. I would have to say this has been your best lace out in recent time, mate. Absolutely awesome stuff. So, round of applause. Where's the setup? Huh? Where's, Where's the, the setup? setup? You're just awesome. You're an absolute okay. gun. I'm Chris Pepper. He's Jamie the J Dog Wallace. We are lace out. And before we finish up, J Dog, I've got one simple question for you. How do you, my friend, want your footy? I want it lace out. Fantastic. And happy birthday for yesterday, big fella. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye, everyone. See you, listeners. Bye. Do you see a listener?